Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 test section 1 on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. All right, so we just want to solve each equation. We're going to start with 13 to the power of x equals 2. So to solve this, I'm going to take the log of both sides. So I'm going to say this is log of 13 to the power of x is equal to log of 2. And this allows me to take this guy and bring it down here. So what's going to happen is I'll have x times log of 13 is equal to log of 2. And I can divide both sides of the equation by what's multiplying x, which is this guy right here. So I divide both sides by log of 13. And this cancels with this. My answer here will be that x is equal to log of 2 over log of 13. So that's the exact value. If you wanted to get an approximation, you could punch that into your calculator and just round it to a certain number of decimal places, wherever you choose, or if you have an assignment, you might be given that value. But this right here would be your answer. So in solution set notation, we'll put log of 2 over log of 13. What about 9 to the power of x equals 39. So again, I take the log of both sides, so I'll say log of 9 to the power of x equals log of 39. And so again, I can bring this down. So I'll have x times log of 9 is equal to log of 39. I'll divide both sides of the equation by log of 9. And that's going to give me, this cancels with this, so x is equal to log of 39 over log of 9. All right, what if we have e raised to the power of p and this equals 72? So whenever I'm working with e, I want to think about the natural logarithm. If I take the natural log of e, it's equal to 1. So if I say ln of e raised to the power of p equals ln of 72. What is this part right here? The first thing is I can take this down here. So I have p times ln of e. What is ln of e? It's 1. This is 1 because it's log base e of e. We know by definition that's 1. So once I have this, this equals ln of 72. And I already have my answer. p is just equal to ln of 72. So in solution set notation, I'll just put ln of 72 inside of set braces, and we have our answer. Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 test section 2 on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. All right, so we just want to solve each equation. So we have 9 times 20 raised to the power of 10x minus 1 plus 10 equals 103. So the first thing I want to concentrate on is getting this part by itself. So in order to do that, the first thing I want to do is subtract 10 away from each side of the equation. And so that would cancel. I'd end up with 9 multiplied by 20 raised to the power of 10x minus 1. And this equals 103 minus 10 is 93. The next thing I want to do is I want to divide both sides of the equation by 9. So I'm going to divide this side by 9 and this side by 9. This will cancel with this. 93 divided by 9, well, 93 is not divisible by 9, but it is divisible by 3. So I could say this is 31 over 3. So let's scroll down and get a little room going. And so now I would have 20 raised to the power of 10x minus 1 is equal to 31 thirds. Okay. So now what I want to do is take the log of both sides. So I'm going to say this is log of... 20 raised to the power of 10x minus 1 is equal to log of 31 thirds. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit more, get some room going. That allows me to take this part right here and bring it down. So I'll have 10x minus 1 multiplied by log of 20 this is equal to log of 31 thirds. Now, I can divide both sides of the equation by log of 20. That cancels with that. So I'll have 10x minus 1 is equal to log 
of 31 thirds over log of 20. All right, let's scroll down and get a little room going. So now what I wanna do, if I wanna isolate this X here, I wanna add one to both sides of the equation. So that's gone. And then I wanna divide both sides by 10. But the easy way to kind of think about that is to multiply both sides by 1 tenth. So this will cancel and I'll have X is equal to, if I distribute this, I'll say it's 1 tenth multiplied by log of 31 thirds over log of 20. And then plus 1 times 1 tenth is just 1 tenth. So that's your answer. You have x equals, you could say log of 31 thirds over 10 times log of 20 plus 1 tenth. So let's write this in solution set notation. We'll say we have log of 31 thirds over, you have 10 multiplied by log of 20, then plus 1 tenth. Then we can close our brackets there, and that's our answer. Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 test section 3 on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. All right, so we just wanna solve each equation. All right, so let's take a look at log of x plus log of nine equals two. On this side right here, we wanna condense, and we have addition involved, so we know we're gonna use multiplication. So we would have log of this guy times this guy. So x times nine, or you might as well just say nine x. This will be equal to two. Once you have it in this format, you can use exponential form. So remember, this is implied to have a base of 10. So 10 squared or 100 is equal to 9x. Divide both sides of the equation by 9. And this cancels with this. You'll end up with x is equal to 100 ninths as your answer. All right, let's take a look at one more. So we see log of x minus log of 2 equals log of 53. So again, I want to condense this side here. I have subtraction involved here, so I want to say this is log of, this guy goes in the numerator over, this guy goes in the denominator. So log of x over 2, and this is equal to log of 53. Now the rules tell us that if I have the same base here and here, I can set these arguments equal to each other. So in other words, I can say that x over 2 is equal to 53, I can multiply both sides by 2 so that x is by itself. This cancels with this. I'll have x is equal to 106 as my answer. So I'll put 106 inside of some set braces and make that a little bit better. And again, that's my answer. Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 test section 4 on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. All right, we want to solve each equation. So we have log base 8 of 4x squared plus 7 minus log base 8 of 2 is equal to 2. So I want to condense the left side here. I have the same base, and this is subtraction. So the way I'm going to write this, I'm going to say this is log base 8 of this guy right here, this 4x squared plus 7 will go in the numerator, then over. That 2 is going to go in the denominator. So then this is equal to 2. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up in exponential form. So I'm going to say that 8 raised to the second power, which we know is 64, is equal to 4x squared plus 7 over 2. So let's solve this equation. I would multiply both sides of the equation by 2 to start. So that would cancel with that. 2 times 64 is 128. This equals 4x squared plus 7. I would subtract 7 away from each side of the equation. Let me erase all this, get some room to work up here. And I'm just going to move this up. So 128 minus 7 is 121. So we'll say this is 121 is equal to 4x squared. So let's divide both sides of the equation by 4. 121 divided by 4, we're not really going to be able to simplify that because 121 is 11 times 11. So what I end up with is 121 over 4 is equal to x squared. So x squared equals 121 over 4. Now I can take the square root of this side, so I can get x by itself. Then I've got to do plus or minus the square root of this side. Now this guy is actually a perfect square. So what we end up with here is that x is equal to, 
you'll have plus or minus. The square root of 121 is 11. The square root of 4 is 2. So x equals plus or minus 11 halves. Now, let's see if this creates a problem in the original equation. So let's go back up. Would it be an issue to plug in an 11 halves here? If I had 11 halves and I squared it, I'd be fine. If I plugged in a negative 11 halves and I squared it, I'd still be fine. Either way, I'm getting a positive value. What I'm trying to make sure of is that this guy doesn't end up being negative, and in either case, it wouldn't be. No matter what I do, 11 halves squared gets me back to that 121 over 4. So you'd have 4 times 121 over 4. This would cancel with this, and I'd have 121 plus 7. 121 plus 7 is 128. So what happens is you'd have log base 8 of 128 minus log base 8 of 2 is equal to 2. That's true. If you use division here to condense, you can say this is log base 8 of 128 divided by 2 would be 64. So you're basically saying log base 8 of 64 equals 2, or 8 squared gives me 64. That is 100% correct. So this works out. X is either positive 11 halves, or also it can be negative 11 halves. In solution set notation, I'll say plus or minus 11 halves. Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 test section 5 on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. All right, so we want to solve each equation. And we're going to take a look at ln of 7 minus ln of 7 minus 5x equals 3. So the first thing we're going to do here is condense the left side. We have subtraction involved, so that means we're going to relate this to division. So we're going to say this is ln of, this guy right here will be in the numerator, so 7 over. This guy will be in the denominator, so 7 minus 5x. And this will be equal to 3. Now what we want to do is set this up in exponential form. Now, where students get a little bit confused, they can't remember where ln came from. So what's the base there? The base is e. Remember, this is the same thing as if I wrote log base e of 7 over 7 minus 5x is equal to 3. So when I go to set this up in exponential form, it'll be e to the third power is equal to 7 over 7 minus 5x. So let's do that over here. e to the third power is equal to 7 over 7 minus 5x. Okay. So now that we've done that, how do we get x by itself? Well, I can multiply both sides of the equation by 7 minus 5x. So 7 minus 5x times e cubed is equal to 7 over 7 minus 5x times 7 minus 5x. Now, we know that this would cancel with this. So on the right side, I'm just left with 7. So I might as well just erase this. So I know I want x by itself. So kind of the easiest way to proceed with this, we could use the distributive property, but I think it's a little bit better to just divide both sides by e cubed, kind of get that out of the way. So this is gone now. So let's scroll down and get a little room going. So we would have 7 minus 5x on the left is equal to 7 over e cubed on the right. So now, again, if I want to isolate x, let's subtract 7 away from each side of the equation. So that's gone. And what I have is negative 5x is equal to 7 over e cubed minus 7. So now as a final step here, I want to get rid of that negative 5. So to make it easy over here, I'm just going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1 fifth. So this is going to cancel out and I'll have x is equal to over here negative 1 fifth times 7 over e cubed would be negative 7 over 5e cubed. And then negative 1 fifth times negative 7 would be positive 7 fifths. So what I end up with is x equals negative 7 over 5e cubed plus 7 fifths. So in solution set notation, we could say negative 7 over 5e cubed plus 7 fifths. Now if you wanted to, you could write this with a common denominator you could multiply this guy right here by e cubed over e cubed. And so what that would give you is you would have negative 7 plus 7 e cubed over the common denominator of 5 e cubed. So you could write it like that as well, or you could write it like we have it here. 
all the same answer either way, so it's just a personal preference.